Hello, my name is Kambiri Cox and I'm from the islands of Trinidad and Tobago in the Caribbean. My program at IHG Delft was a MSc in Water Science Engineering, which I recently graduated from. And I recently completed my internship at IGRAC, where I investigated the reasons for shallow groundwater levels in hand dug wells of Benin. So Oedo is a town in the Abome Kalavi commune of Benin, and it's approximately 20 kilometers from Cotonou. And Cotonou, as you may know, is the economic capital and the largest city in Benin. In Oedo, the residents rely on shallow hand dug wells as their main source of water. And uh, in recent years, they have been complaining about decreasing groundwater levels in these hand dug wells. These wells actually tap into the shallow aquifer where there are unconsolidated sediments or sands and clays. And they are, the wells are scattered throughout the study area, throughout the town. And residents rely on this one solely for drinking water as well as water for agriculture, washing, cooking, and other purposes. However, in 2014, a new well field was developed in Nuedo, and this new well field has boreholes that tap into the deeper underlying aquifer, known as the Continental Terminal. Since 2014, residents have been complaining that their groundwater levels have been decreasing, and they allege that the main cause of these decreasing groundwater levels is abstraction from the underlying well, the underlying aquifer. To resolve the water conflict, my research investigated the hydraulic connectivity of these two aquifers in order to establish if there is indeed mixing between the aquifers due to the drawdown effects of the borehole in the underlying aquifer. To investigate this hydraulic connectivity, my research looked at stable isotope geochemistry as well as general hydrogeochemistry to look at the, the signatures of the two waters and establish end members for mixing. Water samples were collected during a data collection campaign, which was carried out in April to May of this year, where there were three weeks in which I collected samples, myself and my team collected samples from the hand dug wells as well as the boreholes, and then surface water sources nearby and precipitation sources from recent events. The field research team was myself, as well as two students of the University of Abumi Kalavi and a technician from the IRD. My research further investigated two other hypotheses, which included climate variability, as well as land use changes and population growth in the study area. The climate variability hypothesis investigated if there was decreased recharge in recent years to the shallow aquifer, and if this was responsible for declining groundwater levels. Next, the land use changes and the population growth hypothesis investigated if there has been increased abstraction activities from the shallow aquifer due to increasing population and changes in habits in recent years. The methodology for the climate variability hypothesis involved analyzing global climate data sets as well as data collected from the Meteorological Office of Southern Benin. For the land use and land cover changes and population growth hypothesis, this involved analyzing data sets from the West African database for land use land cover changes, as well as census data from the National Census Office and household surveys that were carried out during the field campaign. For results, the climate variability provided no concrete evidence to indicate decreased recharge to the study area in recent years. In particular, the climate parameters examined were precipitation, evapotranspiration, and temperature. The precipitation evapotranspiration data showed a fluctuation around the long-term average with only minimal decrease in recent years. And the temperature data showed that temperature was increasing in the region, but that it was increasing at a much slower rate in recent years. Therefore, the climate variability hypothesis was invalidated based on the data and results collected. The second hypothesis with respect to stable isotope geochemistry and the hydrogeochemistry were inconclusive with respect to establishing mixing between the two aquifers in the study area. For the stable isotopes, which were oxygen 18 and hydrogen 2, the signatures were too similar for the two aquifers to establish end members. And then for the hydrogeochemistry, while we did see a different signature for the two aquifers, it was still difficult to find a consistent trend of mixing in the two aquifers. 
For the hydrogeochemistry, we looked at the dominant cations and anions in order to establish water types for the two aquifers. From this data, there were some preliminary indications of mixing at one of the boreholes, but due to the low mineralization of the groundwater in the deeper aquifer, it was hard to find consistent evidence throughout the study area to prove mixing was occurring. The land use land cover data and population growth data was the most convincing result from the study. For example, in the commune of Abumi Kalavi, the amount of settlement area doubled within the last 15 years alone, and then in Oedo, in particular, the population tripled within the last 15 years. So this makes a convincing argument for urban encroachment within the study area and the increase of impervious area within the study area. With this increase in impervious area, we have decreased recharge to the shallow aquifer, and then with the population growth, we have increased abstraction activities happening within the study area. Using household surveys and peri-urban estimates for consumption within the study area, we were able to determine a large increase in abstraction activities. In Luedo, per capita consumption of groundwater ranged from 42 to 300 liters per capita per day, and that is higher than the national average for urban communities and peri-urban communities. Even more alarming was that within the study area, based on the sample population that we surveyed during the field campaign, we found that 27% of the hand dug wells were constructed within the last four years alone. So therefore, during the time since the well field was established, you also had 27% more wells being in the study area, and with this, an increase of 27% in the abstraction activities. In conclusion, based on the results, the urban encroachment in the study area was the strongest driver of declining groundwater levels in Nuedo. This means that the abstraction by residents within recent years is having a strong effect on groundwater levels in the shallow aquifer. This implies that in recent years, abstraction by residents using the hand dug wells in the shallow aquifer is actually having a large effect on storage within the shallow aquifer and therefore we present some recommendations on groundwater management in the region in order to ensure that there's a sustainable supply for the future. The first of these recommendations is the incorporation of monitoring shallow groundwater levels in the current monitoring network in Southern Benin so that we can determine how the deeper borehole is affecting the, these shallow wells in the long term and also establish trends throughout the study area. A second recommendation is the enforcement of existing regulations on shallow groundwater abstraction in the southern region where we have monitoring of abstraction activities that will aid in further investigations of the study area and establishing more concrete patterns of abstraction and decreasing groundwater levels in the study area. The third recommendation is the connection of the residents to the SONAB network where the residents are able to access this water from the deeper aquifer. In order to really address this conflict of this water conflict happening in the region, if we can connect the residents to the deeper groundwater reserve, then we can ensure a longer, more sustainable supply of groundwater to them and this will be able to sustain a growing population in the widow.